Hey gang, it's Crafty Carter here. Wanted to uh, do a, another update on the automotive uh, Bluetooth power distribution unit project. Today we have a couple of software updates to talk about. Uh, let's get the first one out of the way since it's fast. I've updated the uh, main screen so that it shows all of the inputs or outputs at the same time. So now all eight outputs are on display, you don't have to scroll anymore, and if you turn the screen sideways, it doesn't do silly stuff. So that's a minor update, but of value to uh, actual users when we have them. But the really cool thing that I've taken care of this weekend are setting up the inputs to be fully user programmable from your phone. So let's show that. Okay, you click the input button, that takes you to a list of the uh, eight input styles. There are actually four input wires. Each one can be pulled to either high or low, uh, or both, but not at the same time. And if you want to do both, you'll need to be careful not to uh, short circuit the 12 volt to the ground at the uh, wire, because well, that will be bad for you. Um, but you could certainly do it with a diode or something if you want it. So right now, I'm using a Highway Dirt Bikes uh, clutch lever button system here. One side of each button is connected to ground, and the other side is connected to inputs 3 and 4. So in order to set up the programming, we'll go to inputs 3 ground and inputs 4 ground. So let's look at inputs 3 ground first. All right. So it's currently set up to turn on inputs 1 and 2, as you can see by the uh, green ball under the numbers 1 and 2. So, not inputs 1 and 2, outputs 1 and 2, sorry. And uh, the function is a steady state input, and it will turn it on. So the expectation here is that the signal will always be on, and when it's no longer on, it will do the opposite. So right now, when the uh, input is on, which would be input 3 to ground, when that's to ground, it will turn the lights on, or those circuits on, and when it's floating, it will turn them off. So let's try it out. Those are circuits one and two. On, off. Okay, so now we can look at uh, steady state input off. You'll notice it didn't immediately turn on even though we already know that it's off. It only senses the transition, that step from when it was last on to when it was last off and vice versa. So in order to get that transition started, we'll click here, and now it's ready to go. When we let go, it'll turn on and off and on. Okay. So what is this useful for? These steady state inputs are useful for tying these input wires that I make available to you to um, pre-existing circuits in your vehicle. Lights, for example, might be convenient to tie to your high beams uh, or perhaps to uh, your OEM uh, indicator function. Right? If you wanted to do custom indicators, you could easily tie these to your indicators um, put a light on each one, on each circuit, and then easily set it up that way. So that would be another option. Um, oh, and uh, if you wanted to connect an auxiliary horn to your OEM horn circuit, you could do that. You could imagine that this being your horn, OEM horn button, when you hold it down, it blows off another horn. And uh, we also have on after a short delay, which is useful for that too, if you wanted to attach an air horn to your OEM horn system. So uh, if you want to have like a regular pleasant horn and a really loud, oh my god, you're trying to kill me horn, you can, you just hold it down. And if you hold it down for too long, the air horn goes off. When you let go, it goes off immediately. So honk, honk and then really loud. That would be another option. Okay. And then we have momentary inputs. Momentary inputs are inputs that, ex that expect the signal to just be there for a moment and then the uh, effect sticks. So this would be the kind of thing you might attach a button to on your dash so you can just click it. Um, and so momentary switch on, off. Okay, um, ascending in three steps or states. Uh, this will 
take all of these three states and four states ascending and descending work the same way. So what they do is uh, if you're at ground and you're ascending, it will go to uh, halfway in terms of duty cycle and then 100%. So it'll be halfway bright and then all the way bright. And if it's descending, it'll go the other direction. It'll go from full brightness down to halfway, then off, and then loop back around. So let's look at ascending. Halfway, full, off. Halfway, full, off. And descending likewise works the same way. Full, half, off. Now four states does exactly what you might imagine it does. It's off, then one-third, then two-thirds, then full. So one-third, two-thirds, full. Off, one-thirds, two-thirds, full, off. Okay? And uh, there are eight of those. They're all the same, so we can... Uh, we can certainly set this up. Yeah, let's do this one here. Um, three states. We'll do channels. We'll do channel three. Channel three is this big resistor here, and it's attached to a 15 amp uh, circuit. It's called giant load, and this would be analogous to like all of your heated gear, which should be about 12 amps. Um, at least that's how I got it set up on on my bike. So um, that would be a jacket and pants and gloves. So, oops, wrong button. Sorry, gang. This one. So, you now have three steps. You can turn it off, turn it halfway, turn it all the way. And if you wanted it to be in four steps, because, hey, that's how you like to roll, you can. So that's one-third, two-thirds, all the way. And off. All right. Thanks for following along. We'll have another update next week, I hope. We have brand new printed circuit boards coming very soon, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, and hopefully I'll have a chance next weekend to get one built up and see how it works. All right, take care, guys.